Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, VCDX257 from virtualelephant.com. And in this video, we're going to deploy a Kubernetes cluster using Azure Kubernetes Service. And I'm going to walk you through two things that I really like about it and one that I don't. Let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the basic steps needed to be able to deploy a Kubernetes cluster inside of Azure Kubernetes Service or AKS. So you can see here on the screen that I've already logged into my Azure portal. The first thing that we need to do is actually go to subscriptions. It's on your top toolbar. Go ahead and find it. Otherwise you can search for it in the search bar. Click on your subscription and then scroll down here to resource providers. Now there's a couple of these resource providers that are not going to be enabled by default that you need to register uh, using the UI here so that you can actually deploy an AKS cluster. So the first thing that you want to find is the Microsoft.OperationalInsights. And go ahead and click on that and then there'll be a register button and you go ahead and just click that and it will register it. After you've done that one, you want to go through and find Microsoft.Kubernetes. Microsoft.Kubernetes configuration and Microsoft.OperationsManagement. And you want to register for all three of those. And then once that's done, you'll be ready to deploy and go through the workflow for deploying an AKS cluster. So now that we've done that, we're going to go back to our home screen. I have Kubernetes services right here. If you don't have it, again, just search for it. Click there, and you're going to see this UI right here. We're going to go ahead and click Create a Kubernetes cluster. And then you're going to go through a number of screens here as we build this out. So obviously, select your subscription. If you have a resource group that you want to put things in, which I do, we're going to go ahead and click on that. You can put, uh, you can set the cluster preset configuration. Go ahead and give it a name. We'll call this AKS cluster dash one. Pick your region, the number of availability zones that you want, and again, pricing tier Kubernetes version. Okay, so you have some options here. Um, 125.6, we'll stick with that as the default. And we're going to want to go ahead and just click on the node size. It tells you what it's going to do based on the recommended standard configuration. And then the scaling method, they recommend that you do auto scale. So go through here and click node pools. If you want to modify this, you can. It's going to create at least one for us with a node count of one to five of this standard size. Okay, go ahead and do access. So you have some options here if you want to log it in with uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory. Um, and then you can change all of that. And then here you can pick the network configuration, KubeNet or the Azure CNI, a DNS name prefix, again, standard load balancing. And then you have some other options here if you want to play with it. We're going to leave everything with the defaults right now as we go through this. And then you have some options for integrations. So if you have a container registry, a harbor, a service running somewhere, you can register it there. Um, you can also do some additional insights around logs and so forth. Again, for the most part, you can leave these as the default. You can go ahead and enable uh, Prometheus if you like, and then it will do Gravana as well. Some alerting and then the default policy and so forth. So again, leaving these as the defaults is, is okay for the first cluster. Obviously, you'll want to make a determination from an architecture standpoint what you want these to be long-term. And then go ahead and you can click tags if you want to make any tags. And then you can go through and review and create. Now the interesting thing here is it's going to review our final validation or our final configuration for us and perform a validation check. One of the things that I did learn was those registries that we did earlier, those resource providers. This check does not find those. So if you haven't registered everything that you need to within your subscription, there's a potential that this will error out. It's pretty clear in the log message, the error log message that it generates, which ones you need to go back and actually register if any were missed. So we can see here that our validation was passed. We'll go through and just click create, and then it's going to initialize the deployment for us. And in a moment, the screen will change. All right, and then from here, we can just let it run and it will continue to run until it, the deployment is done. So now that our Kubernetes cluster is created after a few minutes, we can go back to the Kubernetes services page, we can see our cluster, and then we can go through and we can click on it to see some information about it. Now this is the first thing 
that I really love about AKS is that everything is built into the UI. So as a new user or someone who is new to Kubernetes, I can go to this one centralized location to be able to see all of the information that I might need to be able to have for my Kubernetes cluster and understand what is running inside of it. So you can see here, there's a lot of information. You can see all sorts of properties that are defined for the Kubernetes cluster. And then we can go through and we can see things. And this is the second part, right? As we go to look at the Kubernetes resources themselves, we can see what namespaces are created. You can see additional namespaces that you have created as part of the cluster. So you can see that I've already created a sample app that is inside of there. You can see workloads that are running inside of that. Okay, you can select all namespaces. You can select the specific ones. So for like myself, you can see the, there's not a deployment, but there is a pod. And you can see those pods are running because those pods are deployed by a stateful set. All right, so all of this is right here in the UI for you. You can also see storage that has been created, persistent volumes, and the available storage classes that you have. Okay, in addition to being able to do things like scaling up the node pools. So you'll see here that you have an agent pool. That's the nodes essentially running inside of AKS. And you can click on that to be able to scale it up within the bounds that you set within your account. Now, I've already actually upgraded this from one node that it initially deployed up to four so that I could actually deploy that stateful set because that stateful set has some things declared in it so that it will only deploy one pod per node. So I've gone ahead and already done some of these things. And we can go back here and we can click on overview. Now, the second thing that I really like about AKS when you initially deploy the cluster is how do you connect to it? What's the easiest way to get into this thing to be able to start doing things with it? Well, you simply just collect, uh, click on this connect button right here. It's going to pop up this window with some sample commands on it. Now you can do this through the Azure CLI if you want, or you can click on the open cloud shell. It's going to open up a shell window right inside of your uh, browser. And from there, it's going to execute those two commands so that now you've got your credentials saved locally. And now you can start to execute your kubectl commands right from this browser window if you want. Now, here's the one thing that I don't like. Okay. It's too easy. This is too easy. This is Kubernetes easy button. Absolutely. A hundred percent. As a user of Kubernetes, those last couple of years, and doing all sorts of documentation and leveraging different types of open source Kubernetes, Kubernetes through Rancher, Tanzu Kubernetes Grid from VMware. This is too easy. And that's definitely a bad thing, I think, for all of us, right? So I encourage you to go ahead and start using AKS if you're trying to learn more about Kubernetes, because it really is the easy button for us. And there's lots of things that we can do. And I'm going to cover some additional things, such as deploying a sample application that I've written that leverages RabbitMQ, a publisher and a subscriber, as well as an Nginx pod to be able to demonstrate easily how we can go through different types of Kubernetes clusters, ones that are deployed through AKS, ones that are, might be deployed through Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, an open source Kubernetes cluster that you might deploy in an on-prem data center to show us the differences between these different service offerings so that we can think about these things as enterprise architects and Kubernetes operators for what we're going to need as we look to how to support our businesses and enterprises as we go through and start offering Kubernetes as a service. I hope you've enjoyed this video and seen just how easy it is to get a Kubernetes cluster running inside of Azure to be able to start leveraging this both for your own education purposes and to be able to formulate a strategy for how you might be able to help your organizations deploy an enterprise grade Kubernetes service offering for your developers and consumers to start leveraging. If you've enjoyed this video, I, I hope that you'll like and comment below and let me know what you thought, as well as subscribe to my channel where I cover more topics around enterprise architecture, Kubernetes, and microservices applications. Until next time.